Hi guys, I just want to start this one by going through what I asked you to do last Thursday. Um, so last Thursday I asked you to do percentages. Um, I gave you notes on percentages. I asked you to look through the examples. Um, obviously try and understand where the examples came from. Hopefully you did that. I gave you these conversions using your calculator. So if you want to convert from a fraction to a decimal, you type a fraction into your calculator, you press the SD button, and then you, it'll give you it as the fraction as a decimal. If you want to go fraction to percentage, you take the fraction and you multiply it by 100. Now, obviously, the calculator won't have the percentage sign. It will just say 75. Um, if you want to start with decimals, decimal to a fraction, on a calculator, you just press equals very simply. And if you want to do decimal to percentage, again, you multiply by 100. Um, percentage to fraction, you're going to divide by 100. And then if you want to go percentage to decimal, you divide by 100, which will give you a fraction. Um, so in here, you'll get a fraction. And then if you hit the SD button, same as up above, you turn the fraction into a decimal. Okay, So they're worth taking down into your copies, how you make those conversions on your calculators. And then I gave you a few practice questions to do. So I'm going to fly through these. Um, and you can check them then in your copies and make sure that you got them right. So Aoife is shopping for a new TV. The TV she wishes to buy usually sells <coughs> for €550. Euro. The TV is on special offer in three different shops. Shop A offers 20% off the usual price. Okay, so we're going to get 20% of €550. Euro. Now there's a few ways to get 20%. So you can do it using a fraction. Um, or you can do it using a decimal. Okay, so either convert the percentage into a fraction or convert the percentage into a decimal. Regardless of which one of them you do, you're then going to multiply by 550. So that gives us 110 euro. So that means you're getting 110 euro off the price. So it's going to be 550 minus 110, which is 440. So in that first shop, the special offer price is 440 euro. Shop B, it's a quarter off the usual price. Um, so we need to figure out what a quarter of 550 is. Um, Again, you can just type that in as you see it. If you prefer, you can convert this into a decimal. Uh, again, the of is multiply and then 550. So one quarter multiplied by 550 and I'm getting 137.50. So we do 550 minus 137.50 and we get... Oh, 412.50. That's what it is in shop B. Okay, and in shop C, Eva can pay 300 euro now and 25 euro at the end of each month for 12 months. Okay, so 300 euro, fine, plus 25 euro 12 times. Yeah, so that's 300 plus. 300. That's 600. Shop C, you can pay 300 euro now and 25 euro at the end of each month for 12 months filling the table. So that's going to be 600. Um, that wouldn't be unusual for something like that to be more than the actual price because the shop aren't getting paid for it in full for a year. So you get the advantage of being able to take something away for 300 quid when it's actually 550 euro. But you pay for it in the long term because it, they're giving you credit. So they're allowing you to take essentially 250 euro worth of, what was it? A TV away you're not paying for it, so then ultimately you pay for that. It's like anything, like if you go into Harvey Norman's and you buy a dining room table, there's always an option where you can give them 200 euro on the day and walk away with your 2,000 euro dining table, and then you pay a certain amount every month. But ultimately you always pay more than if you could just pay up front. So that wouldn't be unusual. So do you think you should buy the TV in A, B, or C? Um, purely on price and assuming you have 
the money for it. Shop B is the obvious choice. Uh, three students completed the test but got their results in different ways. The teacher told Karen that she got 0.7. Karen got 0 0.7 of the questions correct. John got 80% of the questions correct. And David got three quarters of the question correct. Which student got the best result? Mm. I don't know, just because it's results, they're harder to compare. Not impossible, but they're hard to compare when they're in different forms. Okay, so the best thing to do is to put them all in the same form. Um, because it's test result, I'd probably go with percentages, okay? Because that's normally how you get test results. So to convert, if you look up here, ooh, to percentages, so here's, here is decimals to percentages, you multiply by 100, okay? So we take the 0.7 that Karen got, multiply it by 100, and that is 70%. And same thing here, you multiply by 100, and you get 75%. So which student got the best results? John did, with his 80. There were 20 questions on the test. How many questions did each Karen, John, and David answer correctly? So we have to figure out, for Karen, we're looking at 70% of the 20 questions. For John, he got 80% of the 20 questions. And for David, he got 75% of the 20 questions, correct. Okay, so again, you convert this either into a fraction, which is 70 over 100, or into a decimal, which is 0 0.70. And whichever one of them you do, you multiply by 20. Okay, it doesn't matter which one, you'll get the same answer. So multiplied by 20. So Karen got 14 correct. Same here with John. So either 80 over 100 or 0 0.80. Either way, you multiply by 20. So I'm going to do 0.80 multiplied by 20. And he got 16 questions correct. I'm just going to put in a little line in between these. It just looks a bit messy. Oh. Um. Okay. Sorry. And then what was the last fellow's name? David got 75. So I'm going to go 0 0.75 multiplied by 20 and he got 15 correct okay you didn't have to do the 0 0.75 like i did you could have done 75 over 100 okay so fraction or decimal so karen got 14 david got or john got 16 david got 15 okay and then last week marie had tests in five of her subjects she got 27 out of 30 for history, 17 out of 20 for CSP, 91% in maths, 0.85 total marks in science, uh, 185 out of 200 for English. So what percentage in each, okay? So 27 out of 30, you make it a fraction, and then you make it a percentage. So you make it a fraction just by creating a numerator and denominator, and then to make it a percentage, you multiply by 100. So she got 90% in history. Uh, CSP is 17 over 20, and then we're going to multiply by 100. That's 85%. Uh, maths was 91, so that's done. Here, we have it as a decimal. doesn't matter. You still multiply by 100. So 0 0.85 multiplied by 100 is 85%. And um, here again, we have the 185 out of 200. So you make your fraction and then times it by 100 to get a percentage. So 185 divided by 100, sorry, divided by 200 multiplied by 100 is 92.5%. Yep. Now, which subject did she score the best? So, English. Um, the justification is above, really. She got 92.5%. Her next best mark was 91. No, yeah, 91 for maths and then 90 for history. All right. So <clears throat> hopefully you got all them right on Thursday. If you didn't, please put the right answers in beside 
the bits you got wrong, okay? And then I asked you to calculate a few percentages based on your data, so your chosen project data, and upload to your ePortfolio. Um, I can't check that yet. I don't have access to that yet, so I'll speak to Miss McDonald and try and get that sorted. Um, but that's our first kind of our first numeric calculation that we're going to do on our data. Okay, so when you put this all together in the project, at some point throughout the project, I will expect you to calculate a percentage. Okay, an appropriate percentage, something that makes sense. Like um, with the football example, the percentage of um, kickouts won, for example. That's an, an appropriate percentage. Or the, the percentage of kickouts won by Dublin compared to the percentage of kickouts won by Kerry. You know, making comparison. Comparisons are always nice in maths. Um, okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to move on to our next um, thing. So we'll come back to doing like percentages, decimals, fractions. They're like just proper pure maths, like. And we will be doing more um, things like probability and stuff like that, those kind of calculations and mean and mode calculations. But for now, I'm going to move on and start looking at a couple of charts, okay? There's quite a few of these, so this will take a while, but we'll go through it nice and slowly. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is a uh, line plot. <clears throat> now, I need these notes to go into your copies, okay? And uh, not all of it, just bits that are important. So a line plot is a simple and effective way of representing categorical, so this is important, categorical, it's too thick, hmm. okay, so categorical or discrete numerical data, okay, so if you remember categorical data was uh, when it's not numbers, and then numerical is when it is numbers and then discrete um, discrete was when there was no decimal places they were like counting numbers I'm trying to think of the examples I gave you I think I said like the number of books in your bag or something like that so there tends to not be halves or quarters like you know you have four books in your bag the number of people who live in your house Things like that, you know, you don't have four and a half people living in your house, you have four people or you have five people, okay? And um, so that's what discrete means. All right, so that's what a line plot is used for. You need to write that down. And um, the next thing that's important is line plots are suitable for small amounts of data. They don't really work if you're talking about 50 or 60. They're just very cumbersome and they're kind of messy and um, because every data point is put in individually. So for some of your depending on some of your projects like if you have an awful lot of data you know if you have 40 or 50 different little numbers relating to whatever I know we were looking at births and deaths and crime figures and stuff like that so if you have a lot of data a line plot won't work okay so uh, you might need to isolate your data bring it down a little bit to be able to like maybe choose or hone in on one part of it to be able to use a line plot Okay, um, a line plot uses symbols, usually X's, to represent the frequency of a piece of data. Okay, so it sort of looks like a bar chart, you can see yourself, except the bars are made up of little X's, and each X represents a different point of data. Okay, so you need to take down the first two sentences there, don't worry about the last sentence, you don't need to take that down. And um, this one here, you don't need to take down. <clears throat> I just crossed that out. Okay, you can you can see that from the actual thing below. So we'll have a look at this, all right? Uh, Tom is a car salesman and he sells second-hand cars that have been manufactured by four different manufacturing companies. So he sells Ford cars, he sells Opel cars, he sells Nissan cars, Nissan cars, and Peugeot cars. And each one of these X's represents a car, okay? This is why it wouldn't work if this Tom was selling... 200 cars in a month you know because the x's are just you'd never be able to fit it on a page the x's just go up and up and up and up and up and it's just not practical and um, so there are better charts to use when there's huge portions of data okay so let's have a look that these are nice and straightforward i think 
So how many cars did Tom sell in January? So um, this line plot is showing the number of cars that he sold during January, which means all of these were sold in January. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is that right? Nine. Nine and five is 14. Yeah. Which make of car sold the best? So he sold four Fords, five Opals, three Nissans and two Peugeots. So Opal sold the best. There was the most of them sold. What was the least popular make? That would be Peugeot. And what percentage of the total were Nissan? Okay, so there was three Nissan. Yeah, there was three Nissan sold. You make a fraction, so out of how many were sold in total, there was 14, okay? So what percentage of the total were Nissan? When you're asked what percentage, you always start by making a fraction. Okay, so I've made my fraction. The three represents the number of Nissans and the 14 represents the total number of cars. And then to turn anything fraction or decimal into a percentage, we multiply by 100. Okay, so I'm typing 3 over 14 into my calculator and then multiplying by 100. And the calculator says, now, 21.428571. Oh, okay, it says here that they want that to the nearest percentage. So that means it needs to be a whole number percentage like this. Okay, so essentially we look at the next number and if that's five or greater, we round up. If it's less than five, we leave it as it is. Okay, so since that's a four, that's less than five. So the 21 stays at 21. So 21% of the cars sold were Nissan. Is that okay? Um, so that's a line plot and that kind of thing I'd like you to do, if you could create a line plot and then like like we did in part D there, calculate a percentage off it, that would be lovely. Um, okay, so hopefully you won't have any questions um, on what we just did there, but if you do, um, you can let me know or if Ms. Stack is there with you, Ms. Stack is a maths teacher, she can um, go through that with you if you do have any questions. Now, I have practice questions here that I want you to do. So there's one there with Anne showing the number of days that her and her friends were out of school. Uh, John's grades and a first year group playing different sports. Okay, so there's three, yeah, three questions there. Um, I'll put them into a separate document and I'll put them up on Schoology. Um, so I want you to do them, please. And when you have them complete, hopefully within class, if it's not within class, you'll have to do it at home. I want you to use your data or a portion of your data. Remember, line plots are only for a small number of data points. So you might, if you're looking at crime figures across five years, you might look at crime figures across a month or something, you know, and pick, just pick, highlight that month and do a line plot for that month. Okay, so it is meant to be for a small quantity of data so don't be doing it for your entire you don't want one of those lines to have like 50 x's in it okay because you just won't be able to draw that and it won't you certainly won't draw it well and um, so yeah if you could use your data or a portion of your data to create a line plot and when you have that done upload it to your e-portfolio and um, one other thing I want to just say with the line plots it's important that they're all the same size so like if I was doing this in my copy um. I would put an X to a line in the copy. They're all supposed to be in line with each other so that you can see which is the highest, which is the highest one, which is the second highest one and so on. Sorry, insert. So I would use my, the lines in my copy to help me to keep these organized. Okay, so that they all, they're all, the X's are all the same size. Okay, that's gonna be important when you're drawing your, um, your own line plot and yeah hopefully I'll have access to the e-portfolio so I'll have a look at them um, later on okay so take down your notes okay this bit and also the answer to this question take that down do the practice questions 
once you feel happy that you know how to do line plots and you understand them, then make your own line plot based on your own data. Okay, again, if your data is quite large um, and there's quite a lot of bits to it, then maybe go with a, a handful of the pieces of data. All right, let me know if there's any issues.